morning. Now today I'm gonna do some more wood drilling, and uh, no one like me using the new machine I'm over here for my uh, little ear collets I made yesterday. Let's see if I can flip the camera around here. You can see them down the box there. Oops, this tripod's a little loose. So, I figured today, I'm going to make an ER32 call it holder. And I figure I use the Leland Gilford drill press I restored. So, here's my setup here. Here's the grid. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, with the light. But basically, it's a grid of four rows up and six rows across. 24 collets. I think I only have 15, but I'm missing a few oddball sizes and some metrics, so I figured that I'll give some extra spaces for some new ones that I'll add on. Or I could just um, put the tool in, in here. So this is just the top. It's just uh, blue masking tape on the wood. I have it clamped down to a sacrificial piece of wood so I don't break through on the back. Have it clamped down just so I can work the drill press here and without it spinning around and then I'll move the table down once I get to that point. I can drill half and half. So this is the drill press. I have a video with mostly pictures of the restoration because that's before I was really taking video and painting and sanding. I don't like a camera on there because it gets all of the lens and destroys it so that's a drill press and I came up when I put them side by side this is a auto I always forget the name of this thing Let me look over here Kennedy auto drill press that I restored many years ago and it has its own motor and belt but um when I put them side by side I noticed that the pulleys were at like the same height so I made these stretchy um urethane belts. I put one on the back there too for the main belt because I have the original round leather belt but I wanted to keep that using it. It's gonna yeah you can tell it's just gonna tear apart it's you know 100 years old or so whenever they last replaced it. So there's that and uh, for anybody not familiar with this drill press has a uh, I have it wired to a main power switch back here. Turn the camera around so I can see the screen. As a clutch, I have a, the motor on the back. It's the original was a flat belt, leather belt, and I couldn't find a flat belt reasonably priced. And I don't have the stitcher and everything, so I got a round leather belt with the, um, you know, with the, just the staple you use to connect it. Works fine, doesn't slip. It's on a clutch, so engage it. And it turns on the drill press. So I like that little feature. Get back in. So zoom in here. From the what, medium densely board, medium fiber densely board. I like this stuff. It's um, engineered. And it doesn't swell, expand with humidity, temperature changes. So I like it. I mean, doing nice hide would be nice, but it's expensive. This stuff is cheap, easy to work with, um, very stable. This is the exciting hole all the way through. I know, such an exciting video. I'm using a Fosner bit, and what I like about the Fosner bits is when it's running with the correct light, you can see through the spinning portion, so you can see the tip. So you can align the hole, I send a punch the hole. You can see it perfectly. It's like an old style movie projector. You can see through the 
swat when it's spinning so you can line it right up. Sacrifice piece of wood. Do not put your hand in there to get the chips away. And no, I'm not wearing gloves today. <laughs> it should be. It's cold up here. But not wearing regular cotton gloves anyways, working machines. But I always get chipped. Wearing my cheap, thin latex gloves. Another tool I always rave about is the, I'm going get in the camera here, the Ryobi blower. It's an inflator. It's meant to like inflate and rubber rafts and beds. But uh, I use it as a blow around the shop instead of a compressor running. Works good. I was using the new machine yesterday to do the smaller holes. So I was practicing using the the carriage and the dials to line up the holes directly and learning the where the handles are. I'm not used to the machine, it's totally the handles are all different places than my other machine. So I was just using it for practice. I'm not afraid of sawdust on the lathe. I think it would be nice to use this drill press. Restored it for this type of work. We're asking about if these rubber, you know, urethane belts slip, stretch, hold. I can't stall this thing. They're quiet. The only ticking you hear is the leather belt with the staple in it. But I'm very happy with these belts. I think you can't go wrong. The cheap money you buy them by the roll. So there's the first roll. Using the machinist clamps to hold it on. My sacrificial piece has a step to it. I'm still learning how to hold stuff in front of the camera. So the clamp fits underneath there so it's below the surface. Another trick. My background is woodworking from 35 years ago. <laughs> I do have the depth 
stop set on the lathe and the drill press, so it only ticks the surface of the sacrificial piece. No DRO on this 100 year old drill press. Go to thread it around with two nuts technology. I really like this drill press. Works good. This is the first time really doing a lot of work to it. With it, I should say. Rock steady, no vibration, no movement, no play. It's amazing. first half and continue the second half on uh, off camera and I'll bring you back all right I gotta bring you back to the finished prod project here uh, it's a 24 hole er 32 call it holder only have 15 calls at the time but I'm sure I'll pick up a couple more size I'll need if not, I can place the holders in there. I was thinking about, you know, at first I was going to draw exact holes size for these holders so they'd stay in there nicely. Or I was going to raise the pallet up more so it'd sit all the way down. But I like this height. So if I'm going to store the, I'm going to make another holder like this. But just for all the different tooling. So I'll probably just put those with that, but I could always just make little bushings that are removable that I can place in there, you know, make them a little taller, match the taper and um, you know, just hot glue them in there so I can take them out if I want to use them for more collets. But I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do. I figure I'd just make all the holes the same, but I'll bring you around where this is going to go. Hopefully my measurement's right. It should fit right next to the other holders. Sorry, my camera's on a tripod here and I should have taken it off, but we'll make it work. Oh, whoops. Hey, we tilted right down. Turn that screw up. and 16s I picked up reasonably so I'm probably you know have the holder I'll probably find the collets if I can find a good set on the collets and the box the very bottom there that has all the change gears in it for the threading portion of the lathe so I found a good um it's an old cigar box I think and uh it has a slide top lid there that you can slide off so it's a nice secure box so, and you know, I gotta raise that probably top shelf up. And then that middle shelf is gonna be all the holders. I'm gonna build a rack. I might put an angle. I might put all the shelves at a little angle. Put a stop at the end of the shelf so I can raise the back. So, like I say, I'm just going with the flow as I go. I never make a set plan. I just go and change my mind if I want to. So that's it for the today's project. I'll talk to you later. Alright, bring it back to the collet project 
first ones I'm doing uh yeah 20s because hey it's the ones I grabbed so I did some again camera yeah, did some quick measuring and tested some drill you know holes see what I liked and that's why I liked it fits in there nice tight I was gonna bevel it at first I was playing with different things and I found this drill bit that just fits perfectly so I laid out a grid I forgot to film that honestly so I'll bring you over here yeah, you can see all the little dots first I put the blue tape stone on the side because I messed up the first run and so all the dots uh, where I'm drilling and I have 15 holes three rows of five there's 13 bits you know 13 collets so I figured uh, I was gonna first do four you know four rows but I'm never gonna buy any more of these you know I might come across a, a few oddballs so I left a couple spaces so I'm gonna do basically three rows of five that'll give me 15 spots I'll even be spaced out a little more on the edges because um, I'll show you how I'm going to mount it. I'm just going to mount it on the top of that box where they're all in. And um, basically cut off the top of that box as they are now. But, you know, just the very top. But leave the hinge there. So the collets will sit on the top. And I'll still have uh, storage inside the box. I think there'll be enough room for the little call it holder. But uh, I figured I would do it that way. If I don't like it that way, I'll just take the hinges off and put this around on the top of the box and make it like that. But I'm going to try this. So let me um, put this collet down here and you know, put this tripod somewhere and see if we can get a exciting filament of wood holes being drilled. It's about as high as I can go here. I have to get a taller stand for this tool. So I just have the um, see the milling head set up at 200 RPMs, I think. And I have basically it's all set up nice, nice straight, so I can just dial it back and forth. Don't have to move side to side. I just have a block of wood underneath there for a backer. I have it spaced up with blocks lined up yeah. Oh, yeah perfect my measurement was right I can even use the dial to set this up Fun, exciting video, isn't it?
Alrighty, one road down. I'll do the rest off camera. I'll bring you back. Alright, I think I'll bring you back for the layup portion of... I already did the first one. This is the second one, but same exact layout. Basically, you know, measure board, break it down in grids. I space a little further in from the edges. So you'll clear the... Um, I got a mess here. So you clear the, you know, the frame of the box that's going in. And uh, just evenly figure out once you space it in, even, evenly divide everything. On this, for the example, this one, I went from the edge, two and a half centimeters in, then I went three centimeters in between each center. So that worked out perfectly for this size. Same thing going across. Worked out two and a half meet, two and a half centimeters in and three inches. I mean three centimeters. A little more, sorry, three and three and a half on the three rows. So that's how I do I just used to take the lay it out. So you always make mistakes, so you adjust it. Once you lay it out, you can see if you want it spaced differently. So I just put the tape on there. Once I like it, I punch it, center punch it, and you can peel the tape off. And you got the center hole punch. In your workpiece with no writing on there. And the only problem with center punches sometimes they'll peel the tape. Yeah, they'll get stuck in the hole. So no big thing. Just have to do a little scraping with the fingernail once you get the tape off. The only downfall to center punching it, but you can leave it on the tape, and then uh, drill it with the tape on there. Yeah, that'll come off. Yeah, a little bit left over. And that's the grid. You can see on the camera there, the little dots. And if you don't seem good enough, take your Sharpie. Shove it in the hole. And don't drink too much coffee before you do this, because you get all jittery. Now you can see it better. So now I'm just going to drill up 15 holes. Yeah. It's going to be the same as this, just a smaller size. And then I have to go bigger for my bigger collets. I'm going to probably use the whole shelf. Just drill right in the shelf. I might take a separate piece of wood, build it up just enough to sit down two layers. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do, but that's the finished product process there. Uh, bring it back. Alrighty, and make you watch the boring of drilling 15 holes, but here's the rough drilled piece. Just using a good uh, deburrer to take the edge off and on the back side there's a little lip. So doing this by hand, I was going to set it up in the machine and do it by power, but I think I can handle a little manual cleanup here. You know. So, exciting job of the day, but I have to get organized. I have old tool and new tool and stuff that I don't even know I had. So I'm trying to organize it so I can be more productive here. Cause I want to play with the new machine, but I find I spend more time trying to find stuff than uh, being productive with it. So I'm going to take a little time, get it set up once. Well, you know, we'll always rearrange stuff after a while, but I'm going to try to get it good. So I'll continue deburring my wood here. <laughs> I have a couple spots that didn't go all the way through. Left a little lip here. I had to height set up the drill so I didn't drill too much into my backing board. But I'll bring it back when I, I get this mounted and show you what it looks like. Alrighty, here's the finished project on this side. So I still have a couple more to go, but it's called holder. 
15 spots and um, just add these little, oops, sorry, got a wood cut. thumbprint on the box. I forgot I had to cut. So, there's the finished project. I use these little boxes I picked up, I think it was Michael's or one of those hobby shops. And I decided to keep the lid. You know, you have to take the holder out, but I'm trying to do this one-handed one with one bloody hand. You have storage inside, you could either put the shank and holder in there, or I just put the empty containers in there. And it fits right up there and pretty handy. So that's the finished project. I'll bring it back for the next one. It's probably going to be the same idea. Just uh, one's bigger, one's smaller. I'm going to go get a band-aid. I'm bleeding everywhere. Talk to you later.